Hello, welcome to the program, A Season of Expectancy, coming to you live from the Cross TV in Duarte, California. And I'm your hostess, Dr. Ekwia Osebonsu. And today I'm going to talk about salvation. Salvation. And also I'm going to teach a little bit about proof that shows that Jesus is truly who he claims to be. The Bible is the true word of God. And so if you have your Bible, you can get your Bibles ready. If not, maybe you can write down some scriptures or I have a couple of scriptures that maybe you can write them down and then maybe you can read later on. But before I start this program, I want to pray before. Father, I thank you that your word is true. So Holy Spirit, I commit this program to you. You are the one who reveals Jesus to us. And so you are the teacher, come and teach through me. Let revelation knowledge come and let the name of Jesus be magnified and glorified through this program. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. See, I'm going to read a scripture that is very, very common or very famous scripture that many people know, and it's John 3, 16. So it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, God gave his son, Jesus, to the whole world. That those who believe in Jesus, who accept him and trust in him, they will live forever. Their soul or their spirit will live forever in eternal life or in heaven. Because the spirit in us our spirits do not die. This flesh will die. It will go back to the earth. But the spirit in us will not die. It goes back to God, and either it goes to heaven or hell. There's no in-between, as some people believe. And you cannot pay your way. You know, you can't pay money to get to heaven. You have to do, you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to believe in Jesus. You have to give all your heart to him. You have to live a life that is pleasing to him. And that is only through salvation that we can get to heaven. And so salvation is like our passport or ticket, whatever you, you, you may say. You see, and... Book of Acts, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, also says that there is no any other name given among men under the heavens by which men would obtain or can obtain salvation. So Jesus' name is the name that is highly exalted above all names. Jesus' name is exalted above every other name that you can think of on this earth, that at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess because Jesus is God and he overcame the devil. You see, Adam and Eve sinned against God and God sent Jesus to come and die as a, as a sacrifice so that man can come back to God, can be reconciled to God. And so with the Bible says without uh, the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That's why Jesus died for you and I. So whoever confesses the name of Jesus, you know, comes out of darkness, come out from the hands of the dominion of, un under the power of Satan and becomes the child of God. And the power and authority that God gave to Adam and Eve, that Adam gave to Satan, you get that power, you get your identity, you get that power and that dominion back. 
because now you belong to God, you, be, you belong to Jesus. And so that relationship has been restored. Because I know sometimes I meet a lot of people that they, they wonder why Jesus is, only, uh, is the only way to heaven. You know, some people say, oh, I'm a, I'm a Hindu, and you know, it's the same God. It's, I'm Buddhist, it's the same God. I knew a lot of people who were Buddhists, but now they are saved. And, 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 you know, and, and I, know, I know some Muslims, too. They say it's the same God. I know some Jews that they say it's the same God. So which is which? There is only one God, the creator of the universe. Is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Is the same God that sent his son, Jesus, to come to this earth, to die for us. And you see, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, nobody was able to say that. And I don't think anyone has been able to say that. He is the way to, to, to God. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Well, those who profess to be the way, the truth, and the life, in the long run, they prove to be wrong because there's only one way, and that is Jesus. And there are so many proves or so many reasons why we should believe that the Bible is truly the word of God. The Bible is true. You see, God doesn't speak lies. See, it's impossible for God to tell lies. And so if we know the character of God, then we know that one of the characteristics of God is that he doesn't tell lies. And Satan is the father of all lies because he's a thief, he's a liar, he's a murderer. And so there have been so many archaeological evidence that prove that the Bible is true or the word of God is true. There's so many people who were atheists or who you know, who even agnostics or whatever it may be, they had different beliefs, different religion background. And they wanted to prove the Bible wrong, but eventually they came to believe that truly the Bible is the word of God. And there's life in, in the word of God. And so, I know there was, there, was, there was somebody like William Ramsey who lived around 1851 to 1939, who was an archaeologist. And eventually, you know, he became a servant of God. And, and one, of, one of the um, most, you know, um, Brilliant apologetic teachers in our days. I believe most of us know him or have listened to his program. That's uh, uh, Josh McDowell. Many people have listened to his programs, I believe. And he's one of these people. He, he didn't even believe. He doubted the word of God, whether the word of God was genuine or authentic, but eventually he's a preacher, you know. So there are so many names that we can mention that they, they doubted the word of God, but God proved it because, you see, God said, the word of God says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to, to God. And God takes the weak things and the despised things to confound and the envy the things that are not to confound the things that are. 
And you see, one another reason why we have to believe that the Bible is truly the word of God and is genuine is that there is power in the word of God. It's life-changing. See, people try to change their own lives, but you, you, it's hard to do that because we need the power of the Holy Spirit. When the word of God comes to us, and we receive the rhema word of God. That's the revelation that comes to us when we read the Bible. You know, one, one, a lady that I know said something that was really good, you know, the way that she said it. She said, the word of God is like, a, it's like a, the raw rice. You cannot eat the raw rice. You have to cook it. But when you cook it, it's the same rice, but it's cooked. Then you can eat it. So you see, that's how the word of God is. This is Logos, the word of God, this Bible. That's the written word. But when we read the word of God and we get revelation and if we get a rhema, then that will lift us from, from our comfort zones or even from our shackles. And then we will step forward, we will step out and do what God wants us to do or what we sense we have to do in order to move forward or to get a breakthrough. So some people read the Bible, you know, they read it, they know the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. But you see, they don't, there's no, there's no power behind it. There's no power behind it. There's no revelation that comes be, behind it. They, 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 maybe they deny the power of it, but they, or they don't know the power of the revelatory word of, of, of God. And you see, the word of God or the Bible is life-changing. Those who truly believe in the word of God, live in it and allow the word of God to transform them, they have life-changing experience. So that's why when you are on drug or alcohol or you know, stealing your murder, and you come in contact with the word of God, with, with Jesus, your life changes completely. And, you, you, it, and even the things that you used to do, it will be hard for you to do because you no longer have the desire, the last, to go back to the old life because you see that you are a new creation because that's why uh, Second Corinthians 5, 17 says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation or creation. The old is gone and the new is come. Behold, he said, behold, the new is come. Everything is gone. The old style, lifestyle is gone. A new one is coming. That will glorify God, that people will see your life and that they will believe in Jesus. So truly the word of God can change your life and it can change my life. And it has really changed my life. So I know it. I know that the word of God is true. And another um, point, another reason that we should believe that the word of God is true and that Jesus truly is the way, the truth, and the life is that this Bible has had influence on the life of many people. You see, throughout the whole world, the Bible, the Bible was the first, first book to be printed when the printing press was, it was invented. And the Bible has been the best seller for centuries. So if the Bible is not true, then why would you know, people buy it? Why would even people die for the word of God? Because like you see, the, the, the early church, most of the, almost all the disciples, they died. They were murdered, they were killed. Look, now in the Middle East, people are, people are coming to Jesus because they see that truly there's power in it. People read the Bible, they read other books, maybe Quran or other books, they compare them and they see, you know, they, they get convicted and they really, God really revealed himself to them for them to know that truly Jesus is truly the way, the truth, and the life. 
And the, the, the early church, one of the reasons that the early church, they tried, they, they really scrutinized the word of God before it, makes, make, it made sure that all those uh, uh, books that were written, they, 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 uh, they were able to meet the requirement. Because if they, they were not able to meet the requirement of the canon, then they, they would not accept it as, as the word of God. And so the Bible or the word of God is truly God's inspired written word. And one of the reasons, too, is an eyewitnessing account. You see, when Jesus died, people saw him die, na be nailed on the cross, and they saw him risen from the dead. They saw him ascended into heaven. That several people, hundreds of people, over about even 500, at least, people saw him going to heaven. And so all these are evidence that prove that Jesus is truly the Son of God. And even if you don't believe, you see, there, there are several people that have come out from have, uh, out of body experience or near death experience. I had that years back, and that really changed my life. There's so many testimonies that you can watch on YouTube, you can listen to people. But I know that there are some people, even if they see somebody who has died, that they've not seen it with their eyes, they will still not believe it because their heart are already hardened. They will never believe it till they die and they, they, get, they get to hell and then they will know that it was too late. And so my, my, my uh, prayer this uh, this very day is that when you hear the voice of God, don't harden your, your heart. I have about six minutes. I want to pray for those who don't have relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you don't have any relationship with Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. You can just try it and see. Just, just try Jesus. And also, I want, to, I want to pray for people that were that once believed in Jesus, but they are, they are backsliders. I met a lady, she said, I was a Christian, but I didn't see that. I didn't see anything, any power in it, so I left. Now I'm a Buddhist. No, I don't think she was truly a Christian, because when the Holy Spirit fills you, your life changes completely. It, it, it destroys every burden of the, every power of Satan. So if you want to accept Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I repent of all my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in the book of life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, I want you to look for a church. Oh, and also, I want you to write to me. My information will be on the screen. I want to hear from you. And also, I want to pray for Israel that God will open the eyes of the Jews and the eyes of the Arabs for them to know, and even all people all over the world, for them to know the truth. I want to pray just one minute after that, and, to, and after that, I'll give an announcement. Father God, I thank you that Father, you did not make hell for any man. And it's your heart that all men will repent, Father, and turn to you. So, Father, I pray that, Father, even now that, Father, uh, the, uh, the, the Jews are going to celebrate, we are going to celebrate Passover, Father God. I pray that, Father, let revelation knowledge come in. Let our Father, every single Jew that the Father is doubting or even wondering if truly Jesus, if you are who you claim to be. I pray for revelation knowledge. The Father, open the eyes of the understanding. Isaiah 53, my prayer is that you give them visions like you've been revealing yourself to many people in the Middle East for them to see you in visions and in dreams. Lord, I pray that you do that. 
Lord, for all, Abba Father, for all the Jews, Father, protect Israel, protect USA, protect the nations from any terrorist attack. And my, I pray, Father, for your provision for all the refugees. You protect them. You comfort them. You strengthen them. And let, Abba Father, something good come out of it. We thank you, Father, for the souls that are coming to you. So I call in more souls, Abba Father, from even the terrorists, the ISIS, Abba Father, all the terrorist group, to come to know Jesus, that truly, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, that Isa, he is the savior of their soul, that they don't need to share any blood. They should come to Jesus, the word that he is. So I pray, Abba Father, that this very moment, you draw souls to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, amen. I have a couple of minutes. I want, I want, I want to encourage you, if you've been blessed by this program, my information will be on the screen. I want to encourage you so into this ministry because God wants us to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. That was why Jesus gave us the great commission in Matthew 28. And he said, Matthew 24, 14, he said, this gospel will be preached to the ends of the world and then the, the end shall come. Many people haven't heard the gospel, and it's up to us to go. So if you cannot go, at least your prayers, your, your finances can go. And also, I am keeping you all in prayer. We are praying for you at this studio, and also I want to, to uh, encourage you, you also pray for us so that we will give the right word. And I want people who will have covenant um, uh, uh, covenant part, uh, partner, partnership with us, you know, in sowing into, into this ministry so that we'll be also, we can also minister to, uh, the, to the ends of the world. So I thank you all for watching this program. And so till next time, I want to tell you that I love you and I'm praying for you. Look for a church that is closer to where you live. There's no perfect church. Because no one is perfect. And so if you want a perfect church, a perfect church will be in heaven. So look for a church where they teach the word of God. And I want to encourage you to, to, pre, to study the word, read the Bible and know it. And also wherever you go, share the gospel, share the love of God to people so that people come to the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I pray. So thank you. Until next time, it's bye. <laughs>